America. My name is Armio Say Frimpong. I come to you live every Thursday about this time. And today we're going to we're going to delve right into the Kanye West debacle because I think it's actually pretty funny and it's fascinating. The more research I did and the more I listened to the interviews and the kind of Kanye West's own timeline about the situation, the more interested I was in it because it's actually a story about Kanye West not fighting white supremacy in the right way. That's what he's getting taxed for. He's getting taxed for not fighting white supremacy in the right way. And he thinks he's getting taxed by Jews who associate him with being a Nazi sympathizer, right? And this all actually emerged, and this is clear if you actually watch the Drink Champs, if you can still find it on YouTube. I have clips here. We're going to go through a few clips. This emerged through the um, White Lives Matter t-shirt. <clears throat> so in early October, October 4th, October 4th or October 5th, Kanye West debuts the White Lives Matter t-shirt with Can Can uh Candace Owens in Paris, and it's 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 a big old. It creates a big to do. He calls his boys in L.A. He's in the apparel game, right? So he calls his boys in the L.A. and says, "Like, all right, so we need these T-shirts mass uh, produced and distributed. We're gonna make a zillion dollars, and I'm gonna be at the center of it. It's gonna be awesome." His boys in L.A. who are Jewish say, "Nah, uh, you need to visit the Holocaust Museum because." You don't know what you're doing, and we're not going to produce and distribute your shirt. To which case, Kanye West is like, I don't need you telling me what I need to do to be the voice that I am, right? Um, I don't need you. And so there's a way in which Kanye West is being policed for how he wants to address racism and race in America. He's being policed for that. And he wasn't doing it the right way, and they wouldn't distribute his stuff. So he goes home and rage tweets, I'm tired of this. And not only that, after the, uh, the hullabaloo with the White Lives Matter t-shirt, they canceled four of his shows. And these were not black people who did it, <laughs> who canceled four of his shows. These were Jewish people who, like, within the network, got four of his stadium shows canceled. So he's heated. And then he raids streets. All right, when I get up, I'm going Death Con three on their Jews. When you don't, because because when you go don't go with their agenda, they get you. They try to get you. And so he tweets that, and then he tweets that on the ninth and tenth, and th and then that's when it all goes. He's an anti semite. He's horrible. He's horrible. But this all starts with the White Lives Matter T-shirt. And if you don't believe me. Kind of listen to Kanye. I have some clips here we're going to go through. Listen to him tell it. And it kind of makes sense with the timeline and everything. I, I don't know. I, so I, I am not, like, I don't like the White Lives Matter t-shirts. I think it kind of confuses the movement. Um, but, and I think it comes from, like, a, a place of quality of ignorance. But Kanye gets to do it. He gets to, he gets to say it. And he gets to write a t-shirt for that. And he gets to have to explain it and all that stuff. I'm not, you know, that's not one of, I, I don't shut down production. So it's the question of does Kanye as a black man get to f address racism and race in America the way he wants it? Or does he have to do it the way the Jews want him to? And that is a fascinating question. But let's, let's let Kanye West just kind of talk about kind of his expression, like what, what it means for him all right you know i just didn't have the relationships with the factories right. at that time and i was managing a lot of ideas like i was a you know a, a new dad mm -hmm. i was newly married mm -hmm. i had a bunch of team like a big team of designers with me and we we hadn't established who we were we were still fighting to get our respect mm -hmm. in fashion so there's a lot of fights at the same time so we had to go and basically like intern almost up under these companies because you intern. interned for louis vuitton at one time yeah. right okay louis vuitton mm -hmm. fendi mm -hmm. uh and we interned in a way at adidas mm -hmm. i like the licensing deal was my intern to become uh -huh. you know more in that uh, Bernard Arnault, Bezos, right. Elon territory. Mm -hmm. And just understanding how to, you know, how money works. Mm -hmm. Like this is first generation, mm -hmm. 
like you can say, like look at like Jay with the do say, right. this is first generational right. wealth. Right. And learn those infrastructures, right? Yeah, the infrastructure is how to do a factory. Even right now, like when I left Gap, I moved, uh, we made this t-shirt, like all the tremendous stuff we're doing right now, which is a flip on Supreme where mm -hmm. uh, the guy that used to work for me, mm -hmm. uh, Tremaine, mm -hmm. is now at Supreme. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, we can go further into that uh, a little okay, bit later, later, but no for the problem. main point is, so I took it over to Dove Charney at LA Apparel, mm -hmm. and he used to, he founded Los Angeles Apparel. So then uh, we made the White Lives Matter tease, mm -hmm. and then when I put up the, the tweet, the DEF CON tweet, now nah, he, ain't, he ain't releasing the tea, because mm -hmm. he's Jewish. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, see, this is my exact point that I'm mm -hmm. making. Mm -hmm. Like, Jewish people have owned the black voice. Mm. Whether it's through us wearing a Ralph Lauren shirt or it's all of us being signed to a record label or having a Jewish manager or being signed to a Jewish basketball team mm. or doing a movie on a Jewish platform like Disney. Mm -hmm. And we understand it's like I, I, I respect what the Jew, Jewish people have done and how they brought their people together. So, you know, I think he says a lot of truth there insofar as we don't really own the black voice. We don't. We don't. And I suggested last week that Cosby was on the air because he, he showcased a quality of black family that was completely non-threatening to whites because all of the kids ended up kind of aimless white kids. And, and we don't really own. And then you look at all the Norman Lear shows. Like, to be a black family in the 70s and 80s was to have to go through Norman Lear to be portrayed. So we don't really own the black voice. Our black voice needs final approval, uh, approval by somebody else. And that's not particularly good for blacks' uh, self-determination. And I think that's a conversation we need to have. Now, when I say that we don't really own the black voice or the black mind, and if you control the black mind, you control the black behind, most people will nod their head and say, like, yeah, that's about right. We don't own the voice. Now, when Kanye says, we don't own the voice, they do. And they, he's talking about, you know, Jewish community in Hollywood and in culture. That's when uh, people say, like, you're an anti-Semite. Well, if we don't own it, Someone else does, okay? If we don't own it, if Kanye West can't express how he wants to address racism in America and someone else is policing him and saying like, no, we will, we'll, we'll mass produce and distribute like gangster rap, but we won't mass produce and distribute this white live shirt. That's a problem. That's a problem. So somehow it's okay to say that we don't own and produce our own voice. We don't own our own voice, uh, like in terms of public culture, but it's not okay to say that they do, right? And I just think he's just putting more specificity. And, you know, it's, it's a fascinating interview because um, Conway, he talked about in that clip about how he didn't kind of, he didn't know enough about fashion when he got in. So he had to do... Um, uh, some, some, some work. So I'm going to play another clip and just about, you know, yeah, you, know, you can't really be mad at it. I mean, you can be mad at him, but you, you have to understand that he was done dirty because of the fallout from the white lives matter t-shirt and other people deciding how he's going to address race and how he's going to address the whites. And you shouldn't be able to tell black men how to address the whites. Like Kanye gets to, he gets to do it. Um, and that shouldn't be policed by someone else. And, you know, this is Kanye just kind of uh, talking about how he was done dirty. I love Dove just as a human being. As and this a, is the guy from Adidas? Dove is from American Apparel. Okay. But I'm talking about put out my White Lives Matter tee. The White Lives mm -hmm. Matter tee don't say nothing. It don't say DEF CON and nothing on it, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, put it out. And he's telling me, like, yo, I want you to visit the Holocaust Museum. And I was like, yo, I want you to visit Planned Parenthood. That's our Holocaust Museum. Mm -hmm. I'm like... Yo, I put my life on this uh -huh. at this point. Cause they've been fucking with me too long. Mm -hmm. they, put, they put the crazy narrative out there. My Jewish trainer, Harley Pashenak, who's Lizzo's trainer, right. uh, put it out when I went to the hospital, put it in the press. Oh, I got wow. a bunch of friends that went to the hospital. It didn't go to the press. They did that just like they did in the documentary on the third episode to okay. say, we love Ye like the rest of y'all. We know he a genius like the rest of y'all, but sometimes you got to turn the camera off on him. Right. So they'll go and get a dude that's supposed to be my friend that's been taping me the whole time 
and buy this nigga out for thirty I, I million you, dollars. I thought you co-signed that. I ain't co-signing, but oh. you you get used to that. Paparazzi taking a picture of you, you ain't getting no money off it. Right. You just get used to getting screwed by the mm. Jewish media. Mm. And I'm saying, y'all done poked the bear too fucking long. I preach, I love... So this idea that we don't even control, we don't control the production distribution of our own voice, and that's a problem, um, matters. And make no mistake, the thing is, people always say, well, group economics isn't bad. We just got to do group economics like everybody else does group economics, and then we'll be good. But that's not the case, because what that means is that if you have power and you've associated, like, assimilated power into your group over a public function... That means anybody else outside of the groups now needs your group's influence and like imprimatur in a way that's not accountable to them because they're outside of the group. So it's funny if you go to the Haggadah, which I, I'm a huge fan of Jewish institutions, um, just as cultural institutions, I think some of them are marvels. And one of them is the Haggadah during Passover. And there's kind of in, built into the ceremony, into the dinner is like a time, a kind of a question time where four kids are supposed to ask um questions about the tradition and one of them is this is uh, supposed to call the wicked child and the wicked child is the child who doesn't know that he's actually part of a tradition he thinks if it's all about himself and that's a problem and through participating in the ceremony the wicked child comes to see that like he's actually part of a community and he isn't just alone and then there's this idea of there's a fifth child who doesn't who's so sad because he's part of the tribe but doesn't know anything about any of the customs so the fifth child the fifth child is like the saddest child rarely talked about it's not even there kanye is like the sixth child because kanye thinks that he's jewish and that's the problem he thought he was in the club until the people who are really in the club decided that he wasn't in the club and that's what he's kind of wrestling with right now about like what's it be what's it like to not be in the club the way you thought you were he thought his genius and, you know, I'm not even a huge fan of Kanye West music. I, I mean, I think it's all right. I don't really, I don't really go into that kind of music. But, um, and so it's not, look, black people on the internet who are making fun of Kanye right now for losing his money and only having a hundred so odd million dollars instead of a billion dollars. And because he said slavery is a choice and all these things. We don't know what it is. I have no idea what it's like to watch 10 million, 20 million dollars, 15 million dollars, like factory production, like all of that happened, move from hand to hand to hand to hand to hand to hand to hand. I have no idea. I know what it's like to produce this little show and to produce my kids. And like, and I don't know. So when Kanye West says like, in order to do this, you need to go through about five Jews. Um, like, I don't have no reason to believe that he's lying because he said he thinks the truth will set us free. Now his truth might be like a series of bad judgments because he doesn't read books, but he can read a room, Right. And so, like, he says little things like this. I'm going to um, give a little bit more context to this once it's done. But he kind of, he, he's not dumb. He kind of understands where this kind of all comes from. Like, the Catholics, they wouldn't, they wouldn't divorce people. Right. So the right. Jewish lawyers came, and they were willing to divorce people. That's when they first came into their money. So, like, say, like, the Catholics, they wouldn't. So little snippets like that. By the way, um, there is... Uh, you know, a great book called The Origins of Totalitarianism by Hannah Arendt. The first half is some anti-Semitism. She makes a similar argument. It's like, like, look, Jews were locked out of land ownership in Europe. So they went into banking and all of these uh, transactions. And so they went into banking and arms banking and they went into all these deals and they ended up fi um, uh, uh, funding both sides of wars. And then they get resentment and then resentment came because if you fund both sides of wars it looks like you're just trying to earn it for the money you have no national pride although they were locked out of all of the other like respectable industries um that's what pushed them into you know banking and and, and laws and, and all of these other things so the fact that they were locked out of came up across with another industry and because they were locked out of and they had you know a tribal identity that like went across nations it it, it was convenient to become like, you know, a funder for both sides of certain regimes, which then um, built up resentment among the aristocracy who fought in the wars, but then were like, had to borrow money from people who were funding their enemies. And so um, there was a lot of resentment and this resentment kind of 
took on an ugly turn. But that was the origin of total. That's the origin of anti-Semitism for for rent. She's like, who are these people? And she's like, she she kind of understood that the land owning gentry who had locked out the Jewish people in Europe started getting resentful of those Jews who were doing very well in industries that were not respectable. And so there's a similar story in America. Um, Kanye West says it's because Catholics wouldn't do, do divorces. And so like all the people who really wanted a good divorce lawyer ended up going to the Jews because if you look at the Supreme Court, you see a lot of Jews and Catholics. So you take out the Catholics, some of the best lawyers in, the American are Jew, uh, in America are Jews. And yeah, it's a tradition of laws and the same with Catholicism. It's a tradition of texts and laws. And so it's, it's going to be in a culture and a nation of laws. The people who have the deepest tradition of like dealing with texts and laws are going to, you know, do well in it. So it's not a surprise that Jewish and Catholic lawyers both did well out of their Jewish and Catholic upbringing. But then you take the Catholics off the board and then it's, a, it's, it's kind of a great place to, to be Jewish if you're willing to do things that the Catholics aren't. Right. And Catholic, if you want to do things that Jews aren't. Right. So. But they were also pushed out of like, you know, respectable industries in the United States. And, you know, when they started getting into medical schools at too high of a clip, that's when they, they became they had quotas on medical schools because pretty much they, they didn't want too many. They didn't want too many Jews. And we're seeing kind of the same thing with Asians right now. And so. Um. Jewish people have always had to deal with white resentment. Uh, and like in America and in Europe, and the structure of this resentment would seem like Jews and black people would be on the same side against white supremacy, except Jews want to control how black people deal with white supremacy. And that's, that was the issue. Didn't have a problem with BLM. Um, because it turns out that they were like harmless grifters did have a problem with the kind of grift that Kanye was trying, uh, was trying. And so they punished him. And so unless you're in these spaces where all of this money is, these culture spaces, where all of these money, all this money is moved around, you can't really, you can't really critique him. All right. And so there's a way in which when all of this was coming to light, Kanye was being punished for like being just loud and not fighting the right way. I remember Ben Horowitz called me after 444 and said, I don't know about Jay giving up business, Jewish business secrets. Mm, and these he secrets. Said, he, he was talking about um, building up uh, uh, the, the properties and stuff like that. Yeah, on 444. these secrets can't, they not finna be a secret no more. Like if somebody tells me something, it's like, yo, I want to tell you this, but it's a secret. I'm like, I'm not your personal hard drive. <laughs> like if you want to be a secret, <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> I'm not here to keep nobody's secrets because it's only the truth that's going to set us free. And what they do is, I remember Ben Horowitz. And when you ask, why is Kanye mad? Why is Kanye mad? They're taking his shows. Why? <laughs> like, I, like he rage tweeted. And then the rage tweet gave him, like, gave the perfect cover for everything else. But they were taking away his shows. I want Jewish children to look at their daddy and say, why is Jay mad at us? Mm. I want all the kids that love my shoes and love my songs to say, why is Jay mad? What have you done to his people? Mm. I want Jewish... So I, I really think this Kanye West uh, situation is is illustrative of a kind of policing. We're not allowed, black people are not allowed to fight on race the way we want to. We have to fight the way either white liberals want us to or whether feminists want us to or whether the way the Jews want us to. Like Kanye can't be kind of, like I don't agree, I don't even like his music. I mean, I guess there are a few songs I like, but um, I'm not a particular Kanye West fan, but I believe he gets to fight the way he wants to fight it. Um, and if he feels policed, I think that's a problem. And the idea that we don't own, I mean, Nas doesn't even own his own master. Some Jewish guy does. Um, <laughs> and like Nas, one of the greatest rappers these United States has produced, can't do what he wants with his own music. Uh, because he was like 16 years old when he signed this contract and now he doesn't own his own, he doesn't own his own stuff.
So it's not obvious. Now, I think Kanye is ultimately going to win. And I think, and I think, and I suspect the reason he, um, people are really mad at him is that he's going to go after, you know, he's going to, he's going to try to, he, he, he actually had, um, a plan to, you know, turn internally foment the problem that he's felt. He wanted to turn kids against their parents in order to like expose the problem. Right. And there's a way in which he's a Democrat. Like he's a, he actually believes in truth. They, he, there's a segment where he's like, they tried to um, have secrets about the culture. And I, I was like, if you got a secret about your culture, don't tell me. Cause I think the truth will set us free. So I'll just tell everybody. Here's the clip. You know, I just didn't have a relationships with the factories mm. at that time. And I was, managing a lot of ideas like i was a you know a, a new dad mm -hmm. i was newly married mm -hmm. i had a bunch of team like a big team of designers with me and we we hadn't established who we were we were still fighting to get our respect mm -hmm. in fashion so there's a lot of fights at the same time so we had to go and basically like intern almost up under these companies because you interned for louis vuitton at one time yeah, right okay louis vuitton mm -hmm. fendi mm -hmm. uh and we interned in a way at adidas mm -hmm. i like the licensing deal was my intern to become mm -hmm. you know more in that uh, Bernard Arnault, Bezos, right. Right. Elon territory. Mm -hmm. And just understanding how to, you know, how money works. Mm -hmm. Like, this is first generation. Mm -hmm. Like, you can say, like, look at, like, Jay with the Ducey. Right. This is first generation right. of wealth. Right. And there's those infrastructures, right? Yeah, the infrastructure is how to do a factory. Even right now, like, when I left Gap, I moved, uh, we made this T-shirt, like, all the tremendous stuff we're doing right now, which is a flip on Supreme, where... Mm -hmm. Uh, the guy that used to work for me, mm. uh, Tremaine, mm. is now at Supreme. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, uh, we can go further into that uh, a little okay, bit later. later but no for the problem. main point is, so I took it over to Dove Charney at LA Apparel. Mm -hmm. And he used to, he founded Los Angeles Apparel. So then uh, we made the White Lives Matter tease. Mm -hmm. And then when I put up the, the tweet, the DEF CON tweet, now nah, he, ain't, he ain't releasing the tease. Because mm. he's Jewish. Mm. And I'm like, see, this is my exact point that I'm mm. making. Mm. Like, Jewish people have owned the black voice, mm. whether it's through us wearing a Ralph Lauren shirt or it's all of us being signed to a record label or having a Jewish manager or being signed to a Jewish basketball team mm. or doing a movie on a Jewish platform like Disney. Mm -hmm. And we understand it's like, I, I, I respect what the Jew, Jewish people have done and how they brought their people together. You know, I just... So I think just giving context to what Kanye was going through and the quality of the argument, look, I'm glad you guys, the hundred or so people um, uh, who are watching this, uh, saw this live. Who knows how long this video will be up for reasons. But you can't, one, say that you're not an ethnic group with internal and external policing and power. And then also say, trust us, we're good stewards of, your pow of our power, right? So, like, yeah, I mean, we're, we're held, the black voice is under constraints that are not black. And that's not particularly great for our liberation or the democratic ethic. Right. So we could all agree that we all want to fight supremacy, but they want to police how I fight white supremacy. And that's a problem because I'm not going to fight it the way that you want it to fight it because I don't think the way you fight it works. Or the way you, I don't think the way, even if it works, it might not work in the way that I want working to look like. I don't want black people just to have to be another nation. Um, within the nation, I want all of us to be Americans, which means we're accountable to each other in a public way. Right. Nobody, no billionaire ever. No, no billionaire ever loses their billion dollars because a few black people like called each other and said, this guy's not fighting for justice in the right way. Right? That's not how black people, that's not how uh, billionaires lose their money. It's not because of private phone calls from black people. <laughs> right? Like, I don't care how much juice I have. I will never be able to take away a billionaire's money like that. Right? 
By the way, if you support me doing it, and you know, some people are gonna cancel their subscriptions because of the quality of truth I try to deliver every Thursday. I need you to go to www.funkyacademic.com and kick in five, fifteen, or fifty dollars a month for me to keep doing what I'm doing because. Like I said, you don't have to be a fan of Kanye's music. You don't have to even be a fan of the White Lives Matter t-shirt. But you do need to respect that a black guy gets to fight the way he thinks this ought to be fight, fought. Right? And honestly, um, yeah, I, you know, I, I, so I am, I'm, I'm a fan of him, of his courage, of his crazy, being a little bit crazy myself. And I, you know, I've told you before that if you to shut me up, you're gonna have to take my life. And I, those are the stakes. Those are the stakes. And at least Kanye, or when I start sounding like every other simp, then you know what the deal is. Or I just stop forgetting the fight. If I say that, like, no, we can do it ourselves. We don't need, um, we don't need anybody else. We can just put our own money together. We can do it. That's another. Uh, that's another form of surrender. Because in these United States, you need public accommodations and you need other people. And that, so either other people need to fear you or you need to like, change the structure. Black people saying that we can do it ourselves. We just need to put our money together. It's like the Ukrainians saying, well, we don't have to worry about Russia. We can just handle our own business and clean up our own house first. No, it doesn't really matter what the Ukrainians do. Their problem is the Russians. So if they really want to, their biggest problem is they need to figure out a way to change Russian culture. Or at least change that part of Russia that thinks that the Ukraine is Russia, right? So black people, our biggest problem is the whites, right? And if, and I don't need other kind of pseudo contingent whites being able to police how we fight the whites and how we get the whites to fight themselves, right? So... Thank you for your time. If you appreciate what I'm doing, go ahead and go to www.funkyacademic.com. Once again, who knows how long this is going to be up. So pass on similarly. Uh, pass, pass, pass it. Pass it around. Um, just remember, first they came from Mark Lamont Hill. And when they came from Mark Lamont Hill, what did you say? Peace.